Hey guys, welcome back to another JavaScript programming tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how we can implement matrix multiplication in JavaScript. So matrix multiplication is actually a crucial part in many applications, such as gaming. Like if you're developing games, you're going to need matrices one way or another. And yeah, matrices, basically anywhere where matrices are used, you're going to need matrix multiplication. So I'm going to be showing you guys how we can implement it into JavaScript. Uh, before I actually get started, I just want to say, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement it from scratch, but obviously you could just go and download a maths library such as maths.js, and this will do everything for you, and I'd actually recommend this. I'm just going to show you guys how to implement it from scratch, because it's a good learning experience, and it's also useful if you don't want to have to work with an entire library just for one simple feature. But with that being said, if you want to do more math things in JavaScript, then I definitely don't. I definitely recommend downloading math.js just because it's much more. Uh, it's going to be a lot more reliable and it's going to have a lot more features than if you try and implement everything yourself. You can see here it's determined, finally the determinant of a matrix. But yeah, with that being said, let's get started. So a matrix is basically just a collection of column vectors so for example if you have a two by two matrix it would be something like one zero zero one this is actually the identity matrix and the dimensions of matrices are measured height and then width so dimensions of this would be two by two if we added another row like this then it's going to become two by three but yeah that's basically how the dimensions are measured and I'll just quickly run through how to multiply two matrices. So when multiplying two matrices, let's make another two by two matrix. Let's just make this one, two, three, four. And again, dimensions of this one are two by two. The first thing we need to check is whether these matrices are compatible. So to do that, we look at the dimensions and if these two inside numbers match, so if the width of the first matrix is equivalent to the height of the second matrix, then they are, they are compatible so we can multiply them. And once we've done that, we want to look at the outside two numbers to find the dimensions of the result matrix. So dimensions of this is going to be 2 by 2 again. And let me just draw in a 2 by 2 matrix like so. And to actually calculate what each individual spot is going to be, we have to, so if we want to work out what the first row, first column is going to be, we actually have to multiply the first row of the first matrix by the first column of the second matrix. And we do these, treat these as vectors and calculate their dot product. So what that really means is, let's just quickly circle these. So these are what we want to look at if we want to calculate the first row first product, first row first column. So we do 1 times 1 multiplied by 0 times 3. So 1 times 1 plus, sorry, 0 times 3. And overall that's just going to come out to 1. If we do the same thing for first row second column, then we do first row here, second column there. So that's going to come out to 1 times 2 plus 0 times 4. So 1 times 2 plus 0 times 4. If we do second column first row, sorry, second row first column, then it's going to be second row first column like so. That's going to give us 0 times 1 plus 1 times 3. And finally, if we want to do second row second column, that's just going to be this, which is going to be 0 times 2 plus 1 times 4. And you can see the reason why this is called the identity matrix is because no matter what you multiply this by, it's always going to give the same result. So if you simplify all of this, you are going to end up with just 1, 2, 3, 4. And that shows that we've multiplied this matrix by the identity, so we've got the same thing over here. That was the basic idea of matrix multiplication, just a quick maths tutorial. And now I'm going to show you guys how to implement it in JavaScript. Okay, so storing matrices in JavaScript is slightly different 
Whereas in maths, you store them as a collection of column vectors, in JavaScript, we actually store them as a collection of rows in the form of a 2D array. So to do this in JavaScript, which is pretty simple, we open up our array here, and then we simply store it so that it looks like it does here. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter how we store it. So if we wanted to store it as a collection of column vectors, we could actually do that. What we'd have to do is just store each column vector like so. So if, let me just write up here, we want matrix 1 to look like this if we wrote it out on paper. 1, 0, 0, 1, like so. So you can see this is comprised of this column and this column. We could do it like that, but I think it's going to be easier if we just focus on it, how it's meant to look. So this is how we're going to store our first matrix. Now let's go into matrix 2, do the same thing. And this one we want it to look like this. So let's just store that just like that, nice and easily. So now we've got our two matrices. And we want to create a function which is going to multiply them and output the result. So let's create this. Multiply matrices. Uh, this is going to have, it's going to take in two matrices as inputs. It's important to note that matrix multiplication is not commutative, so it does matter the order which you put them in. Although it doesn't matter here since this is the identity, but if this was anything different, if we switch the order around, we'd get a different result. So just remember to keep that in mind. So yeah, first thing we need to do when we're multiplying these matrices is we want to check if they're compatible. So we want to get the dimensions of both matrix matrices. So dimensions of matrix one is just going to be the height of matrix 1. The height of the first matrix is simply how many rows it has. So this is just going to be matrix 1.length. And the width of matrix 1 is how many items there are in each row. So we can use the first row as a sort of sample and then assume that each row is comprised of the same amount of items. Therefore we're assuming it's a square matrix which should be true. So let's look at the first row. We're also assuming it has some rows. So let's just write up here assuming both matrices are square and non-empty. Let me just say that. Okay. And let's then do the same thing for matrix two. Okay. So to check compatibility, we want to check if the width of the first matrix is equal to the height of the second matrix. So if dimensions one dot width is not equal to dimensions two dot height, then let's just return and print matrices are not compatible. There we go. Now we also can work out what the result matrix is going to look like, working out the dimensions. So let's just call this result dimensions. And it's going to have the height of the first matrix and the width of the second matrix. There we go. And now what we do is we're simply going to construct this result matrix row by row. Result matrix. This is another 2D array. 
and we're going to construct it row by row. So let's create a for loop for const row of. Actually, let's use this as an index. Height is how many rows there are. Right, so we have the current row we're in. Let's create that over here. And within this row, we also want to create the columns. So let's loop through those. Let column equal zero. Column is not equal to the start dimension stuff width. Column plus equals one. There we go. And now that we're here, we have the current row and column of the result matrix we want to calculate. So if you remember from remember from the start, once we know the row and column we want to calculate, we just need to do the dot product of the two vectors. So the row of this and the column of the the row of the first matrix and the column of the second matrix. So, what we want to do is we want to, essentially we want to uh, loop through the row, the row of, the, of matrix 1 and column of matrix 2 simultaneously. The reason we can do this is we know that the length of each of these is actually going to be the same. So we can get the matrix ones row because it's just going to be whatever like um, whatever index this is at. So let's do this. Uh, let me quick row index. Actually, no, that's a bit weird. Let me just call this result row. Okay. Okay, so matrix on row, we're basically getting this entire row as its own array. And we're going to leap through each item in this. So for const num of matrix one row. We're going to also get the index, and you'll see why in just a second. Let's get, let's just call this i. So we've got this row, right? We've got this row, and we're just looping through it, keeping track of the index. And uh, let me call this. Let's call this the row num. I know it's a bit confusing with all of the row things, but hopefully you guys understand what I mean by row num. It's just this number here. And then what we can do is we can get the column number of whatever column we want from matrix two. So matrix two, this is gonna have to be the index i, and the column is simply just the column we're currently working on, like so. So now we have our row number and the column number, we can add them up and we create a new new variable called dot product, just the total of row dot column. And now we can just do dot product plus equals row num multiplied by column num. So we've got our two things, row and column, and we're just multiplying each successive element like so. Okay, there we go. That seems to be working nicely. The dot product is the actual result we want. So once we have that, once we've calculated that, we can simply add that to the row, like so. And once you've constructed an entire row, we can just push that to the result matrix. Nice and simple. So that was actually the result, that was all we needed to do.
let's return this result matrix and see how things are working out. So let's console.log multiply matrices, matrix 1, matrix 2. There we go. And you see we get 1, 2, 3, 4, just like that, nice and easily. So let's try and make this a invalid matrix to see how the matrices are not compatible error gets thrown up. So we can make this invalid in two ways. Either we change the width of the first one. So change the width of the first one. Let's just add that. Now it's a two by three. So it's going to say matrices are not compatible. And or we could just change the height of this one, the second one, which again is going to throw that error nice and easily. Other than that, I'm pretty sure this is a working matrix multiplication algorithm. It's not the fastest, but it's pretty standard. It's linear time complexity, so pretty standard. Obviously, there are a bit more efficient ones, but they start to become a lot more complicated. So I just want to show you how to implement a basic one. Let me just show you another example of multiplication. This is going to be the identity multiplied by scaled identity. So actually, I can do it even differently. So this is two scaled identities multiplied together. So in the result, we're just going to get another scaled identity, which in this case is just going to be 6 times the identity. So what we're expecting is six zero zero six let's see if that's what we get and yeah that is what we get so that's great thanks for watching guys and this was how you create a matrix multiplication algorithm in javascript see you guys in a future tutorial bye